And I went to this pig slaughter class and I met this pig. She was alive and then she was dead. And then they let students butcher her. And I was like, no, <laughs> this is offensive to that pig. Somebody asked me what I would do if like, they're like, if you won the lottery, what would you do? And I was like, what I'm doing? Like, this is what I want to do. We just decided like, this is where we want to open our business. Like, it's a hundred year old building. No one's ever taken care of it. We got this. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the show. This is a show about making mistakes. It's a show about screwing up. It's a show about having a dream, having a big idea, deciding you want to open a restaurant, or you, I don't know, want to cut hair out of your house, and you think you're going to make a living doing it, and then when you start to do it, you're like, wait a second, uh, I don't know if this is such a good idea, or wait a second, I didn't know I had to pay taxes, or wait a second, I have to hire a contractor and talk to the county so I can figure out how to, uh, how to sell food. Like, that's what this show is about. Well, not about contacting the county so that you can sell food, but sort of the hiccups along the way to creating the world that you want. And tonight, we will be with Lauren from uh, uh, Ruby Brink is the name of it. It's a bar and butcher. And I have no idea what that means because I picture drinking uh, with a butcher nearby. And that sounds, sounds pleasant. Well, we'll find out. Uh, I'm sure Lauren is lovely as well. Everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, I've got Lauren here from uh, the Ruby Brink. Uh, welcome. I'm excited Thanks. to chat. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, tell me a little bit about, about Ruby Brink. What is it? Well, the Ruby Brink is a butcher shop and bar on Vashon Island. We have a whole animal butcher shop and we get whole animals directly from farmers. And then we also buy all of our produce directly from farmers. And then our bar is run by a really highly skilled bartender who gets super cool bottles in and makes great cocktails. Yeah. And we put it all together. Oh, mm -hmm. hey, you hear that? Super <laughs> skilled bartender, Jack. <laughs> oh, yes, there are many of us out yes. there. Yes, I don't know. So I haven't been to uh, Va Vashon Island. Yeah. I just I moved, like, I've lived here for like four days now. Just oh. moved up. Where, nice. Where's Vashon Island? Is so it Vashon like is, um, it's like southwest, so it's off of West Seattle. Okay. Instead of downtown. And it's an island. It is an island, yeah. No so bridge. No bridge. There's no bridge. No bridge. You have to ride a boat. Yes. Ferry. A ferry. A yeah. ferry. I mean, I guess you could take a regular <laughs> boat. Too, I guess but. you could take a regular boat. I'm a clamp talking about this because I'm picturing a butcher shop mm -hmm. and a bar. Yeah, it's in the same room. It's in the it's in the same room. Because mm -hmm. I picture like uh, I don't know, like like Eastern European. You walk up and there's a sausage hanging down. It, and you're like, have a drink. Exactly. That's the whole point. Like in Europe, market bars are not weird. That's normal. I love that concept of being able to like shop and eat and drink and have it be casual and hang out. Yeah. We're really just trying to make really high quality food in a really casual place. Yeah. And the market bar, like having a butcher shop in there sort of helps with that because you have people just coming in and buying things and saying hi to friends and leaving. Oh, uh, okay. Instead okay, of like, okay. you know, having a hostess like relegate you to a, your section <laughs> of the restaurant or something. So that is, is most of the food and, and most of the um, community is it like that where it's a lot of local stuff on Vashon Island? Or yeah, I mean, is we it have a, it's a, it's like semi-rural, it's pretty rural still, so we have a lot of small farms. We get a lot of produce from the island. Just from the island yeah. itself? Yeah, definitely throughout the summer, most of it comes from the island. That's hyper-local. Yeah, but we're lucky also there are a lot of farms in western Washington and eastern Washington, so we yeah. have access to a lot of local food. That's very cool. Yeah. So how did, how did you get it, I, I, you're the first butcher I've ever met. Mm. Like, cool. how did you, how did awesome. you, how did you get into this? Well, um, I was really interested in food and I knew I, like, I've always worked in restaurants on and off, yeah. like, throughout the years. And I was trying to figure out, like, what I wanted to do with my life. Like, I was about to turn 30 and I was like, what am I going to do with my life? That's not what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so, um, so, this is your 20-something crisis. Yes, so totally. Like, I'm just like, I don't, well, I don't want to do this forever, so what do I want to do for real? And so I went to a butchering class, like a pig slaughter class, just like <laughs> off the, just one day. And I went to this pig slaughter class and I met this pig and she was alive and then she was dead. And then they let students butcher her. And I was like, no, <laughs> this is offensive to that pig. Like yeah. no one here knows what they're doing. Why are they letting us do oh, that? Oh, and I it's got just like, like, like go to town. It's like zombies. Yeah, coming it in was at the, weird. Yeah, it yeah, freaked yeah, me yeah, out. Yeah. And I was like, no, this is terrible. If someone's going to do this, which I kind of want to do, 
they should know how to do it right and yeah. be respectful then. That doesn't like, seem it was like horrifying. an actual butcher class. No, it was weird. Yeah. And so that was sort of like my intro into becoming a butcher. Well, tell me a little bit more about, so you said you, you worked in food, but even, even previous to that, did you, did you have like your own business or your own thing growing up? Did your parents do that sort of thing? No, um, like I, my family's really into food. Like my dad cooks all the time and my mom like makes food all the time and we yeah. always cook together. And my grandparents were all really into cooking. So I've been cooking my whole life. And like, you know, like uh, one of the big things we do and how this whole, like the Ruby Brink and everything got started was by broth. So oh. I make broth, like bone broth yeah. essentially. And it's like my dad always made chicken stock growing up. Like there were always pots of stock bubbling on the stove and it was a very normal thing to do with like your bones and stuff yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah. so kind of when I started being a butcher and having excess bones, I started a pop-up called Meat and Noodle where we just basically made broth out of bones and like... And put noodles... And, and like, put noodles in it and sold No, that's really unique. I don't think I've ever met somebody that was in food, loved making food, and it originated with broth. Broth, yeah. I mean, it's like... I. I didn't. I don't think I realized it at the time, but just like growing up with that, having that smell and being used to just having a pot bubbling on the stove constantly. Yeah. Like, it wasn't weird for me to just be like, oh yeah, I have all these bones. I'm just gonna make broth. Now I have, ten gallons of broth. What am I going to do with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind yeah, of a yeah. thing. <laughs> like, what do you do with That's that now? The common first world problem. Yeah. But now I have like a hundred gallons of broth. What and you, I know what, what you, to do with it. You so. know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you're going to be like, it's just sitting in the back. Your, your parents, did they have their own restaurant? Did no. they? No. Mm -mm. No. Did they have like the nine to five type of job? And then. No, my dad is a jazz musician. So he like played jazz you're at nighttime. You're getting more and, and then, more fascinating. And then my mom worked. She's like a, she was like a microbiologist at a hospital or something. But your mom was a microbiologist and your dad was a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I used to think that when somebody would improvise with jazz, that they were just making up stuff off the top of their head. Yeah, I know. They're not. No. They practice that a lot. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Well, they know the bass so well. Yeah, they know, they have the foundation, so you can really just go play with anyone. And there's like books of standards that they, like, if you're a working musician, you know the standards, you know, because yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah. What you're talking about and, and what you're sharing sounds a lot like um, the work that you do as well. And so, like, you have to know the standards, mm -hmm. right, to, to improvise. So putting yeah. together the bone broth, things like that, and putting it together. Totally. Or I feel like without knowing it, everything that I've been doing over the last 20 years is, like, giving me the education and experience to do what I'm doing now. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've eaten in a lot of restaurants. Like, I've eaten in a lot of places. I've eaten a lot of food. I've made a lot of food for large groups of people yeah. and not in a professional way, just of a way of taking care of my friends or, yeah. you know, feeding you know, when I was younger, we would do show like bands would come to Reno and like my friends would book shows. And then afterwards, like you have this band from out of town that's staying in a house. And so the, like you should feed like you feed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me what I would do if like they're like, if you won the lottery, what would you do? And I was like, what I'm doing like this is what I want to do. I want to feed people f really good food that makes them feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I'm, pa I'm picturing punk bands being like, of course, we'll go back to Reno. Lauren's there yeah. and she makes really good food. I hope so. Food. I yeah. hope that's what happened. It's kind of yeah. weird like I fed, you know, like this started because I loved feeding people so much and I was like doing all these dinners and they were for free and for my friends and someone was like, you should charge money for this because it's got to be expensive and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. So then I started charging money for it and now I have like a business around it. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah, is yeah. kind of like, it's important for me to, and I know it's important for like my business partners as well. Like this is one thing we all agree on is we want people to feel nourished and taken care of. Like even though there's a transaction happening, that's not that's not what we're doing. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. not our intention. It's to pay the bills, but um, and because we have to. But really, it's about like taking care of people and nourishing people. You also has to live. Yeah, right? I mean, so it has to pay for out. itself. Everything costs money yeah. here. Yeah, so. well, even the even the punk bands coming through town. They need money to gas, gas cost money. Yeah, gas, gas yeah. to keep going, right? Yep, and exactly. continue moving on. Yeah. Hey, Jack, how are we uh, How are we looking? We're ready, we're ready. Are we ready? Ooh, I'm, yeah. I'm ready. All right, what are we, what are we drinking? Uh, today we have a drink called the Born Again. The Born, it's very the born Again. very flower forward. Inside the drink, you've got jasmine and rose and orange blossom infused and all of that is a little bit of butterfly snap pea from yeah. a beautiful gin company up in British Columbia known as Empress 1908. 
Empress 1908 is a color changing gin. You add acid, it turns pink. Yeah. I like flowers. And then there's and peach sauvignon preserves. Wait, Jack, did you know that Lauren likes flowers and things? Oh. Huh? That I really, <laughs> yeah, maybe he Guy did. does research. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. And to uh, commemorate the mums, mum champagne, their reserve brew. One of the fantastic vintages that they have. Oh, like that, oh, that, that looks good. <laughs> like, that. like you guys to show yeah. you all A little bit of peach resin, jasmine flowers on the bottom. Wow. Thank you, Jack Sanders. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. What do are, I? Are you ready? I don't know. Like, like you have a, a preference for how you? Ooh. Like, oh, she's gonna go. Are we in. gonna cheers? No, you're gonna. Oh, cheers. 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 Thanks like, for having me. Yeah, salute. No, it's a thing. Ooh, nice. That's. Fl <laughs> That's <laughs> flowery. <laughs> yeah. That's really Flowers. good. Yeah. Ooh. It is floral. With lots but of it's bubbles. good. Like you could have gone crazy with the rose or not like the balance. Like it doesn't taste like my grandma's cool. basement. Like which is really nice. So, I assume, and I could be totally wrong, uh, because you, you've had such good experience. I think in sort of uh, like laying the foundation and moving forward on this type of stuff. But I assume that there were uh, missteps or things that. Um, like mistakes you had to learn from. Certainly as a small business owner, yeah. somebody getting started on that, like that were like, oh my God, I didn't think it would be like this. Or even yeah. mishaps where you were like, uh, oh no. One of the most challenging times was building this place. Yeah. So what we did is we started like, Vashon is small, right? And I've lived there for, I've lived there for 10 years now. And I knew that if I was gonna open a business there, I knew where I wanted it to be. like where I wanted my business to be. Yeah, is it like a, like is that like a downtown area type yeah, of thing? Yeah, there's, in, in my scope, there is from like the main four-way stop to the movie theater. And if your business isn't there, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it personally. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this building became available. And so the, me and my two business partners, the three of us were like, this is where we want our business to be. This building was about 100 years old. Maybe no one had ever taken care of it oh, really no. and it had been multiple businesses like sometimes up to eight businesses in the bottom floor of this restaurant so like then, at one time mm -hmm. in the bottom floor yeah because it's like a big space yeah and so they were using it for all these small different places and then restaurants had come in and built on top of it and built on top of it so it was um like a disaster in there. <laughs> we just decided like, this is where we want to open our business. Like it's a hundred year old building. No one's ever taken care of it. We got this. <laughs> we, got we got this. No problem. Had you had experience doing anything like that no, before? No, no. I mean, this like, is my first business, right? Like we, you make a business plan and a budget and you think it's going to cost a certain amount and you go for it. And like everything, ha everything happens. Like yeah. it's always something it's always something yeah like and I know that from restaurant life in general because that's something that a mantra that people say like it's always something yeah yeah if you <laughs> I like that <sighs> something's always <laughs> it was bad it I was like good, I gotta give you bad. a moment like it's, a, it's all flashing back like, <laughs> yeah totally well because we've been uh, open now for six months where it's like we're open and it's happening but like building this place dealing with contractors yeah dealing with the county dealing with all these things were like I I'm a butcher. I'm a butcher. Right. You know, and I know how to run a restaurant. I know yeah. how to open a restaurant and I know how to take care of people sitting at a table. Yeah. I know how to feed them. But building the space, I did not know how to do that. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I was ready for how many decisions and how many things and how expensive it would be. Like what was, what, do you remember some of the big decisions? I mean, did they go to you or to your business well, partners? Well, I have two business like partners. So luckily, like, I have to say, like, I, I'm an, I feel like I'm an entrepreneur and I'm doing things on my own, but if I wasn't doing it with these two other people, with yeah. Jake and Russell, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the three of us are a team and support each other and we all have our different areas of knowledge and expertise yeah. and history. And straight up, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't have this place. Yeah, so getting, getting everything just to the point where you could be a butcher, yeah. that was the really hard part, yeah. the really scary part. We have investors. Yeah. I mean, that was a big thing, you oh, know, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, how do you pay for something? Like this is a, this was a huge build out and mm -hmm. it's a big space and we want to feed a lot of people and we have big ideas. Yeah. So we have to 
make sure that it works on paper yeah because it's still a business yeah and so luckily our investment team is awesome and okay. they are support us otherwise they wouldn't be doing this yeah, 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 yeah. but being beholden to people is scary yeah and it's scary when things start to go not right we hired a contractor that took our money and didn't do any work what yeah he did a bad job and then like l took off with the money oh yeah, yeah and yeah, so yeah, yeah. that like that was a year i mean that cost us a year right and then we had to make more money to pay for that money and the way you make money is like by asking people for more money yeah because you don't you're not open yeah and like yeah. i'm not going to make a hundred thousand dollars doing something yeah like that's not a thing On i don't know how to broth. do that yeah, yeah like <laughs> what do you what do you do you like start i don't know you <laughs> like just like fill it out like, all we could do is just recover right like that's it because i this is what I want, this is what we want, and this is what we're doing, and we know that what we're doing is good and people will like it, you know yeah. what I mean? You kind of learn to like, what you can handle and what you can't handle, like yeah. you're just like, okay, I can't, I can't think about this right now, this is too much, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to, and I'm going to tell everyone how I feel about it, so they all know, and then I'm just gonna like, take a week. Yeah. And I'm not gonna think about it. Yeah. Because otherwise, like it becomes over, it becomes overwhelming, and straight up like, it's weird even talking about it now because the day that the bar opened, I was like, I'm never thinking about that again. Like it was too hard. Also yeah. because it's like, I don't even know, you're, we're spending all this money and doing all these things and I don't even know if people are gonna like it. Yeah. Like what if everyone hates it? Yeah. What if everyone thinks my food sucks? Like what about that? You know, like I bet a million dollars on like the fact that I can make people happy with the food that I make. What does the space look like now? Is well, it? Well now it's, this the dropped ceilings are gone and the archways are gone. It's all raised and up. And the black and paint is gone and the yeah. plastic vinyl, everything is gone. Is it an old gone. brick building? Is yeah, that what it is? Yeah, it's an old brick building. And so now it's got, basically on one side we have a butcher shop with a little case and a counter and then like a glassed in area because I sort of assumed people didn't want to watch me butchering while they were eating. That, I don't well, know. I thought that's what would be happening. Well, like I mean, when you said butcher shop yeah, and bar, I, just, I was like, okay. I just, you know, there's a lot of, vegan people that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't want them to have to like watch me work while they're yeah, yeah, yeah. So Wait, so do you have vegan people that come in to drink at the butcher shop? Totally. Oh, I we love have vegan this food. So much. We have lots of vegan food at my restaurant. You because, do? Yes, yeah. because like vegetables and not eating animals is just as important as like respecting and eating I, meat I, in a responsible way. I totally way. agree. So yeah. we take care of everyone and we use meat more as an ingredient, yeah. you know, and yeah. use the whole animal. What are you thinking about doing next? Like what's, what's coming up? Well, I really, you know, I really want to prove that this model of business is sustainable and yeah. doable. And I hope that more places like this pop up around yeah. where we buy food directly from farmers, yeah. but they can still afford to eat in our restaurant. The farmers can still afford yes, to eat in your like restaurant. Yes, like we don't want to price out the people that grow yeah, our food, you know? Like that's beautiful. It's great if you curate your produce and you buy fancy meats and then you sell it to rich people, but like that's not the point of all of this, right? Right, right, right. right. Since yeah. you have people that know what to do with the whole animal or the whole yeah, vegetable. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. even, it's like kind of a joke, but it's not like we use kale stems. Like you don't throw those things away, you use no. them, you know what I mean? And yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like we don't throw away anything. We just yeah. try to use all of it. That's really my goal. Like I want to show that this is a sustainable model and that all over the country we can have like great restaurants where you don't have to worry about what you're eating. Really it's just about, I think we wouldn't have food without farmers and I will do anything I can and support any farmer thing I can for small farmers and farmers that are larger, just they're where our food comes from yeah. and I will continue to support them and yeah. do outreach for them. I, I love how inclusive you are about all this, like 100%. I have a place where I want everyone to feel comfortable. I want people to treat it like it's their second living room because yeah. that's why we made it, you know? Yeah, so you're gonna keep doing it. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I'll keep doing that. And I mean, we've only been open six months, so I feel like in five years I can decide what else I'm gonna do. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Go on tour. Maybe. With your punk band. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's pretty fun going on tour with punk bands, so you never know. <laughs> the on tour butcher. Let's hear. Uh, like, uh, what's Thanks. another way that you would say? Like, you've been around food. You've been in Europe. How how would you say cheers if it's not cheers? Well, I mean, I love Japan, so yeah. kanpai. Com kanpai? I haven't <laughs> said that. Kanpai. <laughs> right on. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so strong. <laughs> 
And that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Lauren, for being on the show. Uh, I love what you're doing. I know other people love what you're doing, especially bringing together people with food. I, hey, I have a great idea on how to bring people together. Uh, you should tell them about this show. And you should subscribe to this show. And you should click on the like button and all that fun stuff. And if you have your own mess up, go to fups.com. We'd love to see you on the show.